our God. What about righteousness, truth, and judgment? Oh, we throw that out. We, we believe in blessing and prosperity and everybody gets along. You're bowing. And then you've got taking the Bible out of context. Oh, judge not lest you be judged. Really? Let's look at the word. Why hasn't anybody told us that? That that word, judge not lest you be judged, is sue. That changes the context. And how many people have heard, oh, God will not put on more than you can handle? That's not what the Bible says. It says he will not put on more temptation than you can handle. That's the devil twisting those words, just like he did with Jesus in the temptation. He said, oh, you can cast yourself down. You know the angels are giving charge over you, and they'll keep you from dashing your foot against the stone. He used scripture to try to get Jesus to throw himself down. And, and pride. Oh, I know the angels will come. That was pride. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. But see, that's what's going on, is they take the Bible out of context, and they don't let the Bible interpret itself. They stand up there, and they put their opinion in it. And they're going to be judged for that. They're going to be held highly accountable for that. And then you've got the ooey-gooey love and joy and peace God. And, and, you know, I see these as the hippie Christians who don't believe there's a war going on. Oh, and God will protect me. God loves me, although I'm, you know, stealing from my neighbor or I'm um, gossiping or, you know, I'm, I'm not really going to church every week, but God's got my back. Yeah, God's got me. He knows where I am. Yeah, that's right. You're a pretender. God is not an ooey-gooey God. He is a holy God, and you are spitting on the blood of Jesus when you do that. Then you got the Holy Spirit heebie-jeebies. You know, I've, I've since felt the glory of God, and it is a weight. It is a weight that presses you down. It says in the Bible, it says, Jesus said to the disciples when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, which is olive press, he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Pray that you do not enter into temptation. And what happened? Darkness came, they fell asleep twice. That's the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is a weighty glory. It's a heavy glory. It's not a heebie-jeebie. Woo! It's a soul. When you get, go to a church and they work you up with fear, you're going to hell if you don't do this, and you're going to blah, 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 blah. And they're working your soul up, and, oh, I don't want to go to hell. Let me have Jesus. What happens the next day when your soul isn't being moved? Did you really make a decision in your heart to follow him? To let go of the drugs and the alcohol? Or did your soul just get riled up? Because your decision to follow Christ has to be made in your spirit. In your will. Not in your emotions. I'm not an emotion preacher. I am like it is. This is what the Bible says. And I say what the Bible says. No hooey gooey, heebie jeebies. And then, like I said, you've got the hellfire and brimstone. Fear. Fear is not of God. You don't get saved because you're going to hell. You get saved because he is worthy. And there's another plan. And you can actually live if you lay your life down. You're in the matrix until you get saved. There's no way you can get out of the soul rule if you don't get saved. And then there's heaven and rapture. Oh, Jesus is coming to get me before anything bad happens. It's not what God's showing me. He never ran from a fight. He's showing me that there are bad people and there are good people, and the rapture people think that he's coming just to get the good people. That's not a good father. Let me tell you something about those people. I was talking to a friend of mine, and her mother um, is a homosexual right now, and she was talking to her boyfriend or whatever you want to say, that woman is 45, 46 years old, and she's never been touched by a human hand in a good way. You going to tell me that God's going to leave her behind? Oh, but he's a holy God. I do know that. But you're going to tell me that because every time the devil touched her, he raped her brutally. And a woman, one time, touched her in a sweet way, and that's why she's homosexual. 
You're going to tell me she's going to hell? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. God is going to train up warriors to lay their lives down where they really are walking the walk and talking the talk. And that person is going to go across this woman's path one day because God's going to make sure of it. He's going to go across, he or she is going to go across her path and he's going to touch her or they're going to see their life or whatever and they're going to want what they've got because they're enslaved. Evil begets evil. Just because you had a family that gave you everything you could possibly want and took you to church every Sunday and you had a lot of grace on your life, you can't call that person a bad person and you a good person. That's not how God sees it. God's going to ju judge us based on the grace that was upon our life and what we did with it. If you had a family that gave you everything and took you to church and all that, you better be using 100% of that grace. Because if you're out running around and doing things that other kids are doing, you're going to be held very accountable compared to someone that their mother got a divorce from their father. Their father left them for another woman, and then their mother kept having boyfriends, and those boyfriends kept abusing that child. And that child don't want anything to do with God because that person called himself a Christian. Come on, guys. God is a good God. He's got a plan for sinners. He doesn't have a plan for pretenders. And you're going to be judged by the amount of grace that was on your life and what you did with it. So I don't personally believe in the rapture. I personally believe that his kingdom coming is the spirit is going to rise up and defeat the soul. There's going to be a battle. The Bible talks about it in Revelation 12. There's a war that's going to go on in the heavens. Because what goes on in here is affecting the atmosphere. And it's going to cause a civil war. And I think that what's going to happen is that it says multitudes are in the valley of decision. Does that mean you can keep sinning until that happens? I wouldn't do that if I were you. It means that today is the day of salvation. And if you don't want to be on your face like the heathen, you better come to God and start getting in his presence so you can carry his glory. Because it is going to be a frightful, frightful thing if you don't really know him. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, 3, 4 says, The man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Now, we're taught that that's the abomination of desolation, that's something that's going to happen in Jerusalem and whatever. Maybe, but what is the temple of God? What's the temple? Our heart, our spirit is the temple and so what's happening right now is the devil is sitting down in their temple as God. What I mean by that is in churches, like I said, they see it upside down. The devil is sitting in that temple ruling that church because it's soul-led. That's what's happening. That's the Antichrist. I know that there's a, I believe there's an Antichrist body just like there's a Christ body. But I believe that the enemy is the one that looks good, but he really doesn't have a relationship with God. Because those are the ones that killed Jesus. Give me the Satan worshipers. Give me the hell's angels. Give me the prostitutes and the drug addicts. They're not the ones that put Jesus on the cross. They came running to him. They loved him. It was the ones you sit beside on Sunday morning that put Jesus on the cross, that looks good. But they have no love in their heart. They didn't recognize Jesus when he came. It's the way it looks to me. Eternal life, like I've said over and over again, is coming back into oneness with the Father. Now, really, really pay attention because this is some heavy stuff, these next two slides, and then we'll be done. We are born through man's seed, okay? We're born through man's seed. Everybody on the face of this earth was born through man's seed. 
Jesus is the only 